Welcome back to Horrifying Stories. 39-year-old general contractor Mark Matheny and his hunting buddy, 49-year-old Dr. Fred Bonson, were out hunting when Mark saw two cute brown cubs bouncing off in the air, not far from where they were. The next thing he knew, the mother bear suddenly charged right at him. This is their horrifying story. Viewer discretion is advised. The two hunters had just been talking about how the conditions were almost perfect for hunting at Yellowstone National Park in the area of the Gallatin National Forest. It was the morning of September 25th in the year 1992, summer had just been over with the foliage slowly starting to shift into the shades of autumn. The cold autumn air was gently breezing through the thick forest. Ecstatic with their big game early on that morning, having caught a four-point mule deer, they continued walking the trail through the forest in high hopes that this was only the beginning of a hunting streak that day. Upon reaching a hill, Mark sensed movement some 35 yards from where he was walking. He paused for a look and saw two cuddly cubs roughly around one year old, at about the same size as that of German Shepherd dogs. The two were playing around, bouncing off and racing around. It was a stunning and fresh sight for him to be looking at the two cubs, playful and seemingly harmless. Not until he noticed that the two cubs weren't just playing around with each other, but were also feeding on their mother's milk. It was then that his eyes shifted to the huge bear they were latched onto. Mark came eye to eye with the mother bear, and in a split second, he saw the two cubs getting hurled up in the air, as the bear suddenly got up and was heading fast straight into his direction. Obviously fixated on Mark as her target, the mother bear growled as she charged in lightning speed. Mark saw for himself how furious the bear was, and immediately tried to look for a tree he can quickly run to, for escape. He knew he barely had a chance, but his reflexes made him begin sprinting towards where Fred was, around 20 yards up. He screamed frantically as he ran, alerting Fred that the bear was running after him, and telling him to get his pepper spray ready. Now, during that time, bear sprays weren't a thing yet, but they heard a lot of success stories of people who used pepper sprays on bears. So Fred made sure to bring one with him on that hunting trip. He had this small pepper spray bottle that was normally used as a non-lethal self-defense weapon, presuming that what works against humans would also be the same with bears. The small bottle was conveniently strapped around his waist in a belt he improvised for the same purpose. Unfortunately, although he had initially planned to, Mark wasn't able to get pepper spray for himself. It didn't come as a surprise for both of the hunters that the bear swiftly caught up on them. Fred who struggled to pull out his spray after it got stuck, immediately plunged and laid flat on the ground. Mark on the other hand, took cover as he positioned himself behind a log. As he turned his head around, he saw the huge bear right before him. Overwhelmed with fear, Mark tried to get his senses together, and in his heightened adrenaline, positioned his bow on the target. As he started pulling back, the bear's paw swung fast, smacking and sending his bow and arrow flying in the air. In the blink of an eye, the mother bear was already behind the log, also face to face with Mark. All he could see at that point was the bear's sharp teeth grinding and growling before his very eyes. The mother bear pounced on Mark, landing on top of him and leaving him helpless and unable to put up a fight. She ruthlessly ripped his face as she ate off his face and neck. He felt every bite from her sharp teeth, even hearing and feeling every crunch in his skull as the angry bear devoured him. As he screamed profusely, the bear remained unbothered. Only one thing kept running through his mind, this might just be exactly how his life was supposed to end. Then, out of nowhere, Fred came out of his hiding and charged right at the bear with his pepper spray in his hand. He screamed loudly, catching the bear's attention and shifted her focus onto Fred. Right before the bear plunged him to the ground, Fred managed to aim and shoot the spray straight to the bear's face. Now the bear was already on top of Fred, ready to devour his second victim. However, before she could launch her full attack on Fred, she noticed Mark quietly crawling his way out of danger. Then for the second time, the bear charged at Mark, but this time, Mark was able to shield his head by wrapping his arms around it. Now, it was his arms that the bear started ripping off. 
Knowing better than when the bear first attacked that his screaming and resistance only made her more aggressive, Mark decided to play dead. In a couple of seconds, the bear was already off of him and was heading for Fred, when Fred immediately launched his counterattack against the bear. As soon as the bear closed in on him at a distance of around 10 feet between them, he once again aimed and blasted the spray at the grizzly, this time directly hitting his nose and mouth, and completely using up the pepper spray. The protective mother bear puffed and breathed heavily at the sudden and unexpected counterattack. She pulled back and started retreating back into the thick forest with her cubs following after her. As soon as the bears disappeared into the woods, Fred rushed to Mark's side to check if he was okay, and initially assessed the extent of his injuries. From being Mark's hunting buddy, Fred put on his doctor's hat as he saw Mark needed urgent medical attention. Mark's head was dripping with blood. The skin on his left cheek had already dropped, opening a portion of his face. On his scalp was a deep cut from the bear's piercing bite. To slow down the blood flow, Fred wrapped his wounds with a bandage, and made Mark hold it and continue applying pressure on it, while they both made their way back to where their jeep was parked. Blood was still dripping from the cut on his scalp into his eyes, making it more and more difficult to see the path, but he managed to find a solution. By tilting his head forward, and looking down so that the blood could drip directly on the ground. With his adrenaline all pumped up, his body was numb, and the only pain he felt was from his arm that seemed to have been broken from the bear's second attack. After about 20 minutes of walking, they arrived at their jeep, and before they hopped on board, it was then that Mark thought of having his picture taken, to serve as a graphic reminder of what he had to endure that day. Finally, they rode the jeep, and Fred drove off to Bozeman Hospital for immediate medical attention. At that point, the adrenaline was slowly dying down and reality dawned on Mark. His heavily injured head and face was excruciatingly painful. Fred also sustained wounds from the bear's first attack on him, but thankfully, his thick coat and clothes somehow protected him from getting deep wounds and cuts from the grizzly's sharp teeth. While his wounds and cuts were not too deep, he had bruises on his side, and got some of his ribs dislocated from the sternum. Meanwhile, Mark's ripped off cheek apparently was so deep, it caused a muscle to be torn away from the jawbone and the cut that reached his saliva gland and larynx. He had another deep cut in his eyebrow and around his skull's crown. But what was astounding, despite all his injuries was the fact that the wound brought about by the bear's lower teeth, was one-eighth inch short of his jugular vein. It was such a close call. In spite of his own state, Dr. Fred insisted on being the attending physician of Mark. With his dislocated ribs, he performed the operation on Mark for almost seven hours. All in all, Mark had to endure 15-inch long stitches from the surgery. Even after getting discharged from the hospital, Mark continued to endure the effects of the attack on his body, such as consistent and constant migraines for around two years. It was like a nightmare that kept haunting Mark, and even pushed him to take an indefinite break from his construction business, due to his struggles in keeping himself focused on the job. Not long after, Mark received an offer from a pepper spray company to provide a live testimonial of his near-death bear encounter. Eventually, he joined the company as a part-time sales representative. However, after the management disregarded his product improvement ideas, he decided to risk it and put up his own pepper spray business called UDAP Industries. He put all his effort and resources on making this new business venture work. His vision for the company was not only to sell bear pepper spray, but he was also committed to promoting awareness and proper education on how to respond in an actual bear attack. He got his first sale six months after, and since then, the company has continued to grow year on year. In the end, the nightmare brought about by the gruesome ordeal that kept haunting Mark for a time, turned into a life of living the dream. Thank you for making it this far. If you like this video, please hit the like button, and subscribe to get updated on our latest uploads. We appreciate your support. Again, thank you, and see you on the next one.